Every day, school districts across the country are faced with an increased number of data security threats and privacy challenges. The most frequently experienced type of K-12 cyber incident reported last year involved some type of breach that included student or staff data, including payroll and personal records. In some cases, these incidents have led to payroll theft, identity theft, and even the filing of false tax returns. Over the next few minutes, we'll highlight five protection areas and some best practices that you can implement this school year to protect your digital identity, the digital identity of our students, and the increasing online footprint that we all leave behind. But first, as cyber attacks become more prevalent in schools, it's helpful to have a basic understanding of our current cyber threat landscape. So over the last year or so, we've seen a great increase in the amount of cyber attacks that school districts are experiencing, and they're becoming increasingly more debilitating to those school districts. The amount of ransomware being introduced to school districts has increased um, drastically, and the amount of overall cyber threats, the first half of 2019 alone, already surpasses what was seen in 2018. We found that a lot of school districts are vulnerable to a number of different kinds of cyber attacks, given the amount of resources they have to throw at the problem and that cyber criminals are realizing that they do have deeper pockets than the average consumer. The biggest threats school districts nationwide are seeing are ransomware incursion into their networks, um, securing their environment and requesting that districts pay ransom in order to regain access to their systems and to their data, as well as spear phishing attacks, asking them to transfer funds to steal money essentially from the district. Well, the number one thing that school districts can do is address the human factor, uh, and that is to make sure that they're doing regular and ongoing training with their staff so that the staff is aware of what the current cyber threat landscape looks like, um, the common practices that the cyber criminals use to try to get into systems or try to get access to data, and also to train staff on current policies and procedures that may be in place in the school district around the protection of uh, student or teacher or principal data. Also, school districts really should start to take this cyber landscape very seriously. And if they haven't done so already, they should be looking to adopt uh, you know, governance processes as well as policies and procedures around their cyber landscape. And they need to audit those on a regular basis to make sure that all of the rules are being followed. When accessing your email, exercise caution before clicking on a link or opening an attachment. This is one of the most common methods that attackers use to gain access and steal information. Always consider the content of the message. If the request is out of the ordinary, or if you're not expecting the email, it could be a phishing email. Check to see if the author's name matches the email address. Sometimes hackers will try to trick you by making it look like an email comes from someone you know. Hover over any links to see if they're taking you to where you want to go. If it is a phishing email, delete it and follow your organization's procedures for reporting possible spam. Finally, if you do click on a link or open an attachment that turns out to be malicious, report it to your district technology team immediately. Failing to do so could allow an infection to spread. Keeping these tips in mind will help to keep your inbox clean, your personally identifiable information safe, and your school's network a little more secure. To avoid others from gaining access to your personal files or email, you should always lock your workstation anytime you're away from the screen for more than a few seconds. On a Windows device, simply hold down the Windows key and press the letter L. On a Mac, this can be accomplished by clicking the Apple menu icon in the upper left corner of your screen and then selecting Lock Screen. You can also lock your Mac by pressing command Control q on newer versions of the Mac operating system. For older versions of the Mac operating system, press Control shift power on a Chromebook, you can manually lock your screen by pressing the search and L keys, or at the bottom right, select the time and click on the padlock icon. By following these quick steps, you can ensure nobody else will gain access to your computer, keeping your personal information secure. A strong password provides essential protection from financial fraud and identity theft. 
One way a hacker can break into your system is by guessing your password. So, make sure the password you are using is strong and unique. It should contain a mixture of character types and be at least eight characters long. Consider using a passphrase or a simple sentence that is easy for you to remember, but not easy for someone else to guess. Something like, I wake up at 6.30. Here we have an easy to remember password with 18 characters, a capital letter, three numbers, two symbols, and four spaces. And one final note about passwords. Do not write down passwords and leave them in an easily accessible location. If you need a place to store passwords, consider a password management app on your smartphone. When working with students and staff members, it's sometimes necessary to share sensitive information with other authorized personnel. How you choose to share that information is something to think about. Always use appropriate tools when sharing personally identifiable information and never send sensitive information through unencrypted email. It's always best to share PII in person or over the phone, but when you do need to share it electronically, follow your organization's policies and practices for transmitting sensitive information. Leveraging technology in the classroom can enhance teaching and learning. As we discover new tools and implement new programs, it's important to consider how companies collect data and what they plan to do with the data they gather. New York State Education Law Section 2D has specific requirements for vendors and school districts to ensure student and teacher data is handled appropriately. Do not establish accounts for students to access online resources without consulting with administration. We hope you found this video informative. And while there is no guarantee that we can stop cyber attacks from happening, by increasing our awareness and implementing simple procedures, our digital identities and the digital identities of our students are much more safe. For more on data security and privacy best practices, consult your local regional information center or your school district's technology leadership team. Thanks for watching.